Finding the right picks for solo queue can be hard. Everyone has different play styles and preferences, so there's no magic one size fits all that answers the question, what should I play to climb? That said, there are still some ways to give you a push in the right direction. One thing I really like to look at is what the pros are playing right now. And that's exactly what we'll be talking about in today's video. We'll talk about two picks in each role, then going over how high they score in five different categories. We'll be judging them on a scale of one to five on their blind pick ability, early game strength, objective control, and lane priority the flexibility of their itemization, and lastly, their scaling power. We'll be starting things off in the top lane with Kennen, who currently sits at a 55% win rate when picked by pros. He does have a decent amount of counters, so be careful with this one. Ending up against a pick like Kled or Irelia will not be a good time. If you do get a good lane, he has a fairly strong early game with good poke due to his range and a reliable escape tool with his E. In the good lane, he also scores really well in terms of lane priority for objective control. You'll usually shove in foes and have first move prio. His item flexibility is one of the highest in the game since you can go AP with Rift Maker to deal with tanks, AP with Rocket Belt to burst down squishies and team fight better, or change up your build entirely to go AD. When it comes to scaling, Cannon is off the charts. Once you reach 3 plus items, a good flash ultimate can instantly win a team fight. The other top laner we'll look at is Malphite, who comes in with a 54% win rate. His blind pick rating is pretty high. Against most AD melee foes, you win hard in close-up fights. And when dealing with ranged or AP champions, you can just run Comet to trade well and lane with Q spam. If you do end up in one of his few bad lanes like Olaf or Mordekaiser, the reliability of his ultimate means you'll still be very useful later on in the game. Malphite's early game rating is really high for a tank, thanks to his flexible trading pattern I already mentioned. His objective control is also pretty strong. As long as you're fighting with your ultimate, you'll win almost any early game skirmish. His adding flexibility also ranks pretty decent. Like any tank, he can swap between resistances as needed, but what gives him an edge over most other PP boys is that you can also itemize into more AP if you think it'll give you more value than just being an unbreakable wall. Malphite scaling isn't quite as high as Kennen's, since his ultimate has a bit more counterplay, covers less area, and doesn't one-shot entire teams. Still, it's overall a very nice engage tool, especially when you play around enemy flash cooldowns. Before we go any further, I just want to quickly say that as you see from our first two entries, you do not need to be on a traditional carry to carry games. Pros win just about as much on a damage dealer like Kennen as they do with a pure tank like Malphite. It's all about how you make the most out of a champion's kit. Learning to get the most out of what different champions have to offer can be tough, but that's where we come in. Our team of coaches over at ProGuides.com are ready 24-7 to help you learn any champion in any role so you can start playing them the right way for climbing the ladder. We also just switched our sub from annual to monthly so you can get a premium ProGuides experience for just $7.99. With that, you'll get a discounted rate with coaches and have access to all of our courses anytime. Now back on topic, let's take a look at the jungle. Gragas is our first pick, rolling in with a 55% win rate. His blind pick rating is maxed out for two reasons. One, he basically doesn't have any truly bad matchups in the jungle. But the second, and even bigger reason, is that he's a super strong flex pick right now. He's fairly good top, really strong mid, and can also be played support. With powerful ganks, thanks to the combo of CC and high burst, his early game is super nice. The combination of fast clear speed and good ganks also means you can control the map fairly well, which in turn gives you really good objective control. His itemization is pretty hard set. It's almost mandatory to go AP if you really want to be useful. There are Jack Show and Gauntlet builds out there, but they're really not that great. His scaling does fall a bit short. His late game damage can be insane, but to hit it on backline carries, you're gonna need to E flash, and that's assuming you can get past their frontliners and the carries just walk into range. The other jungler we have is Jarvan, with a pretty scary 59% win rate. He's another super safe blind pick, with his only sort of bad matchups being Gragas and Wukong. Even then, his fast clear and ability to spam ganks gives him a really strong early game, so even in the bad 1v1 jungle matchup, if you just avoid your foe, you can set up your team to win. 
Jarvan can easily solo down objectives pretty fast, giving him a high rating here. His item flexibility is super low. You basically build the exact same path in every game with the only bit of wiggle room being to go Radiant Virtue over Gore Drinker in some instances. His scaling power rating is a bit deceptive here. His ultimate is super strong in teamfight speed easily, one of the best in the game against flashless immobile carries, but he loses points because he can't really solo kill backliners on his own and basically needs allies to follow up and kill the carries that he puts in the cave. Now for the mid lane, the first pick is Jace with a 60% win rate. While this isn't his meta role, this is also something that we called several patches ago. The buffs aimed at making him better in top lane just made him busted here. He has a pretty high blind pick rating since he has almost no counters and foes will generally think he's going top lane. Since most meta laners are very scaling oriented, he'll dominate early game in almost every game. His lane priority and objective control is also super high. Jace has a lot of pushing power, so you should have first move to any objective and once there, his poke makes it hard for opponents to contest. His itemization is pretty rigid, with the only flex option being taking Gore Drinker over Eclipse for a slightly more bruiserish approach. Jace's scaling is considered mid-tier. He does have insane damage late game, but there are some areas he falls short. Comps with high sustain will just heal up his poke and he can find it tough to get onto carries in 5v5 since he's pretty easy to blow up. Our other mid laner that pros abuse super well is Talia, who comes in with an insanely high 64% win rate. She doesn't have many tough matchups, but the few that are bad are really bad. A bursty foe like Tristana or Fizz can threaten you at all stages of the game, from level 1s to 18. Outside of those tough ones, her early game is pretty good. She has decent clear in the first few levels and good setup for jungle ganks. As you get levels and some items, specifically Lost Chapter, her ability to insta-clear waves gives her great lane priority and objective control. Even when you're not looking for an objective, every time you walk into the fog of war, enemy side lanes have to respect your ganks. Even if you don't go, they're forced to give up CS or risk dying when you actually go through with your roam. Her itemization is not super flexible. You can vary between burst builds rooted in Ludens and anti-tank builds with Leandris, but at the end of the day, your playstyle and functionality is the same. Let's take things down to the bottom lane, starting with Jinx, who has a 58% win rate. Blind pick wise, Jinx ranks pretty mid. Being immobile, it can be rough dealing with long range engage champions like Zac and Malphite. A lot of people think hyper carry means having a bad early game, but Jinx is actually pretty solid thanks to her high range and DPS. The fast wave clear she gets from having AoE auto attacks gives you the ability to always have prio for moving to early fights. Just be sure you're only doing it when it's for sure a good fight. Her itemization is extremely rigid, with the only real decision being between Kraken Slayer and Gale Force. That said, you should almost always go Kraken for the raw damage. Of course, Jinx is god tier in scaling power. She's the late game carry, with unmatched damage output in teamfights. The combined extra range of her rockets and lethal tempo allows you to kill enemies before they can even get to you. Add an enchanter to the mix and you basically cannot lose at 3 items. The other bot lane pick we have is Yasuo who wins 60% of the time. He's a very strong blind pick since he's both a flex pick and just destroys all other traditional AD carry spot lane. His only slight downside is that you really want another knockup on your team, so he isn't super ideal in the team comp without that. While he is technically a melee champion, he can permanently gap close and does a ton of damage even early, so he has great laning. He also clears waves fast and can block the enemy AD carry from trying to shove back with Windwall, so you can always guarantee priority for first move. Yasuo's itemization isn't too flexible though. You'll typically go Bork or Shield Bow first and choose between Wiz End or Mercurial later for magic resist. The rest is pretty static. Yasuo's scaling is crazy. His DPS is nuts. He has a ton of outplay potential with his dashes, knockup, and Windwall. He's also able to take part in huge wombo combos if you have a teammate that can hit a big knockup. Yasuo is definitely sort of a hard champ to master, but remember, our elite coaches over at ProGuides.com are always ready to help speed up that process so you can spend less time learning and more time raking in the LP. Finally, we have our supports. Here, we'll be starting out with Rakan, wins 55% of the time in the pro's hands. 
his blind pick rating is fairly high. He can be hard countered in lane by some picks, notably Alistar and Melio, but always provides a ton of utility later either way. His early game ranks in pretty mid. He has potential to be aggressive, but that will be super reliant on having an aggro AD carry to go in with, or a jungler you can roam and make plays with. Rakan is essentially a melee champion, so getting prior with him usually isn't too easy, unless you have a super dominant AD carry. That said, his ability to fight skirmishes over objectives once you're actually in the fight is super high thanks to the setup on his RW combo. His itemization is very flexible, being able to go with either Guardian or Glacial Rune Pages and having multiple builds. You can be more enchantry with Shirelias and utility items like Ardents and Mikhails, a damage amp build with even Shrouds and Zeeks, or tank your options like Radiant or Solari. There's no questioning Rakan's scaling power. All that CC works super well to both go in and set up fights or peel for your teammates, making him easily the best engaged support in the game right now. Rounding out our list, we have Melio, who also has a 55% win rate. He makes for a super safe blind pick, able to play into any matchup easily and slotting into any team comp thanks to his all-around kit. Melio pairs well with anyone, but you'll feel the most of his early game strength when paired with a high-range AD carry who can constantly get off pop shots to apply all that extra passive damage. His lane priority is pretty meh, but in terms of the actual fight over objectives, Melio contributes a lot. He's also a fairly flexible champion, build-wise, with both Aerie and Guardian having their place as with most enchanters. You can also flex between the standard Moonstone and Shirelias like other enchanters, or go for Radiant if you really need that beefiness. And of course, Melio's scaling is obscene. With crazy damage amplifying power, the ability to give range, and AoE cleanse and heal, how wouldn't he be a late-game god? And that about wraps things up for our top 10 champions that pros play. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on what's going on in the meta. And if you're really serious about getting better at League, don't forget about our website proguides.com. Until next time, good luck out there on the Rift. Later.